Good morning, my name is Jason Sears. I'm with the Gacona Volunteer Fire Department. I am the fire chief here, working at the Gacona Volunteer Fire Department, and I uh, want to talk a little bit about fire safety, share with you some stories about what fire damages has happened here in the Copper River Valley, and uh, try to give you some tips on how you can prevent uh, having an indoor fire at your house. Well, good morning again, and uh, here talking about some of the different indoor fire hazards that we have in our homes out here in the Copper River Basin. And uh, specifically, we want to talk about wood stoves, fireplaces, and also candles that you may have in your house. If you're using a wood, uh, fireplace in your home, uh, it is recommended that you take and you keep a screen, protective screen in front of that fireplace, and uh, make sure that you uh, also, <clears throat> as you are uh, doing that, um, Keep your fireplace uh, clear, about two or three feet. Make sure that it's, there's plenty of room. There's nothing really pressing right up against your fireplace. Also, don't leave your children unattended around that fireplace. Kids like to play with fire, and it's always important that you, all, you make sure your children are, are being observed and watched, when they're, especially when there's a fireplace or a wood stove there. And uh, keep all the tools and accessories out of reach because kids like to take their little poker sticks and they like to poke into the fire and to watch, thing, watch the sparks come out. So one of the things that you need to do is just make sure you keep your children, keep an eye on your children around the fireplace. And kids, make sure you realize that there is a great danger in playing with fire, specifically those fireplaces like that that have an open flame. Keep that guard up, keep that shield up around it, keep everything away from it two or three feet. And then also, uh, parents, make sure you talk to your kids about fire safety. It's always important that you give the lecture, you talk to them, let them know, hey, this is what happens if you play with fire and have an escape route out of your house. We'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's always important that you have a plan in case something does take place. Now, wood stoves. Uh, wood stoves, many folks out here have wood stoves, and some of the things that you need to do uh, to protect your home from a wood fire is to make sure you keep your chimney cleaned out. We, one of the biggest fire calls we get in the Copper River Basin are because of chimneys catching on fire and people have not cleaned their chimney out. So it's recommended that you do it. Um, we, we encourage people to do it every two months, but as you see that your, your chimney gets, needs to be cleaned out, it's important that you make sure you get up there, get it cleaned out, get somebody to clean your chimney out, whatever you need. Contact your local fire department. I know here at the Kona Volunteer Fire Department we have chimney brushes. We also have the poles that you could use if you need to clean your chimney out. You can call the fire station and you can, uh, we'll meet you down here and get you loan out a chimney brush so you can clean out your, your chimney. And then also, uh, make sure you remove and dispose of all the ashes that are in your wood stove because those things build up and what happens is, is they build up and they will overflow and, and the fall, some of the hot ash will fall out and those hot embers will fall out onto your carpet or to your uh, hearth around your, your wood stove. No. And they could catch your, uh, your carpet or your flooring on fire. So make sure you, you keep that, uh, that area clean around your chimney. And then also, don't burn anything other than wood. I know there's a lot of people say, well, it's a great way to get rid of my trash. Well, what happens when you burn burning anything other than wood in your wood stove is you're, you're creating material in there, uh, 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 combustion in there that's not supposed to be in there. So it's recommended by the manufacturer. It's also recommended by your local volunteer fire department that you just use your wood stove to burn wood. And then also make sure you have smoke detectors. With any fire, any, any fire that you have in your home, whether it be a fireplace or a wood stove or even a candle that you're just burning in your home, make sure you have a smoke detector. And we'll talk about the smoke detectors here in just a few moments, but make sure you have smoke detectors at least in every room, every hallway, and uh, also carbon monoxide detectors. You want to make sure that if something's going wrong, that dangerous gas is, is there, you, you have a detector that can detect that dangerous gas. And so uh, when it comes to fireplaces, when it comes to wood stoves, make sure that you have a smoke detector and it's operable and working. And you know how often you have to check your smoke detectors at least every, at least twice a year. All right, when we're talking about candles, we've just talked about fireplaces, we've talked about wood stoves, but when we talk specifically about candles, you want to make sure when a candle is burning that it's within eye uh, sight. You want to make sure that you keep an eye on that candle. Somebody could bump into it, somebody could uh, accidentally walk by and bump the table that the candle's sitting on and knock it over. So you want to make sure it's on a sturdy surface and that somebody's there and you can see it at all times. And then also use the well-ventilated areas. We love those 
smelly candles that make the room smell good. But uh, what happens a lot of times is if that candle gets snuffed out by that hot wax that's in there, it can create some dangerous gases. And so make sure that you have your, your candle in a well-ventilated area. And then also keep it away from flammable objects, just like your fireplace, just like what you're doing at your wood stove. Make sure you have your couches, your, your drapes, and everything away from your candles. You don't want those things catching on fire when they get bumped over. And then use candle holders. Uh, one of the keys in helping indoor fire safety and having indoor fire safety is make sure your candle is sitting on a hard, sturdy surface that when if it does get bumped, it's not going to knock over and fall onto the floor and something like that. And then don't use candles as a nightlight. I, I, I encourage you not to use candles as a nightlight because a lot of people like to leave their candle burning all night and uh, they never check on it. So a cat could come by, a dog could walk by and knock that candle over. And we have seen that happen out here in the Cock River Basin where a candle fell over and when it fell over it burned a house down. So be careful with your candles, all right? Well, good morning again as we talk about some other items that we're dealing with in, with indoor fire safety. One of the big keys that is important that you talk about is when you're burnt, when you're cooking in your kitchen. It is vitally important that when you're cooking in your kitchen, again, you keep everything away from the stove. Uh, moms, dads, even kids, when, you're, when you've got that pot on top of the stove, keep the handle pushed in because you don't want some little kid walking by or somebody walking by bumping that handle and spilling that hot grease or that hot liquid over onto somebody. So make sure that you keep that, liquid, that uh, handle pushed in to the inside of the stove. Don't let it hang out over the edge. And um, make sure you keep an eye on what's being cooked and what's in the, in, the, in the oven. And for those of you that may be deep frying turkeys, you know make sure you keep that turkey get that turkey dry before you drop it into the grease because you don't want that big grease fire explosion that you see a lot of times on YouTube. You don't want to become one of those YouTube channels uh, sensations yourself. So make sure you keep that turkey dry when you drop it into that hot grease for deep frying your turkey. And then also, uh, when you're talking about smoking in your homes, uh, a lot of people enjoy smoking cigarettes and, and other things. And I just want to encourage you, uh, never smoke, never make sure you do ashes, make sure that cigarette butt is completely out. Make sure you, you stomp that cigarette butt out. And then also never smoke in bed. Uh, don't take that cigarette with you to bed because when that happens, you could fall asleep, you could drop an ash down on the, on the mattress, and uh, you, you've seen those videos where those cigarette butts or that hot cigarette lands on that mattress and it doesn't take but just a second for that whole room to be consumed with smoke and fire. And then there's also a statement I like to make, hope you remember, close before you doze. Uh, you can go on YouTube and watch some of the videos. When you fall asleep at night, make sure you shut your door to your bedroom. That's one of the best ways to minimize the damage and help you to be able to escape out of your house. Is so make sure you snow, or you close before you doze. Uh, that's, a, that's a national campaign that went throughout the nation for fire departments to make sure it got out to the public. So uh, just a simple statement, close your door before you doze off at night. And I, that would greatly help uh, keep you safe, protect you, but also minimize the damage to your home if there were to be a fire. I know all of you at your homes have your TVs plugged in, you have your, uh, your game uh, systems plugged in, you got your computer plugged in, you got your cell phone plugged in, and you got like six or seven different outlets just slam packed with, uh, with cords and whatnot. Make sure that you, uh, you minimize the number of units or number of devices that you have, have plugged into one outlet. I know it's a funny thing to get those uh, power strips and plug in as to fill up all those power strips of Christmas lights or computers or whatnot. But make sure that you minimize that because what will happen is you'll overflow, overheat that outlet and you'll cause an electrical fire in your wall and that could run back and, and just lay dormant in that wall and smolder back there in that insulation for days, weeks, and maybe even months. And so make sure that you don't overload your outlets because when you overload your outlets, you don't know what's going to take place behind that wall. So make sure you don't overheat your outlets and, and keep everything uh, minimized. If you don't need it, don't plug it in. If you don't have to have it charged, don't, make sure you don't plug it in. Plug it in only when it's needed to be plugged in. I have a question for you. Where should your smoke detectors be located in your home? Well, according to the National 
uh, fire protection services and other national agencies, it's recommended that your smoke detectors, you have one smoke detector in every bedroom. It's also recommended that you have one smoke detector in every hallway that's in your home. Not only in every hallway and every bedroom, but also on every level. And I would even add that if you have put one in your kitchen, if you have a boiler room, put one in your boiler, maybe where your dryer is, put one in your dryer, in your laundry room as well. You can never have too many smoke detectors. You want to be alerted in case there is a fire in your home so you can get up and that you can get out. And so it's, it's recommended that a smoke detector in your bedroom, in every bedroom, every hallway, every level, and I would even go as far as to add a few extras in your home. Don't place smoke detectors near windows or doors or other ductwork that may have a draft because that may interfere with the operation of your smoke detector. So make sure when you put your smoke detector up in your, on your ceiling that you put it 12 inches away from any wall, any, any uh, ductwork or any door. That way that if there's a draft, uh, it won't affect the operation of your smoke detector. And I like to put them right in the middle of the room. I mean, if you're gonna put one up, put it right in the middle of the room, that way you know nothing's gonna interfere with that. And then also, change your batteries. They say change your batteries every time you change your clock. So we know that's twice a year. So when you change your clocks and set your clocks back or forward in the spring and in the fall, make sure you change your batteries. And most of you probably know this, but on your smoke detector, there's a little button that you can push that says test. It's recommended that you test your smoke detectors once a month. And that way, you know that they're operational. If you don't, and if something happens and they're not working, uh, you can contact your local fire departments. So most of your local volunteer fire departments out here in the Copper River Basin, we have smoke detectors that we can give away, give to you, and uh, so we, we'd be happy to do that. We got a grant through um, American Red Cross, and American Red Cross has helped us get some smoke, smoke detectors, and so if you need some, let us know. We'll try to get you what we, what we can, and uh, make sure you check your smoke detectors. And then we want to talk about having an escape route. That's huge out here. Winter time, summer time, it doesn't matter. If you're, as you're out here dealing with fire, you're in your home and you're sleeping and everything is going well, and you all of a sudden you hear that smoke detector ring off, jump up, and you know what they say, low, get low. And it's stated that you get low, crawl out, um, don't check your door, don't open your door, um, get out of your house, have a secondary escape route. If you can't go out your door, go out a window. Have some way that you can get out of your house in case there's a fire. And then I encourage you to do this. Have a place where your family meets. Uh, whether it be your neighbor's house, whether it be uh, down the road at the end of the driveway, have a place where your family meets. And then encourage your parents, encourage your children. You may have to encourage your parents to do this. Practice. Practice having smoke uh, escape routes and practice getting out of your house in the middle of the night. If you don't practice it, you'll never know how to, to exercise it. And so I encourage you to practice your escape route and then have that escape route so everybody knows exactly where it's at. I would encourage you maybe you could draw it out and draw out an escape route and say, Mom, Dad, is this where we're going to meet? And know the number to call. The number to call in case there's an emergency out in Cop River uh, Basin is the same number. It's nationwide. It's 911. And if you notice something's going on, you have a fire, you have uh, smoke in your home, don't be afraid to call 911 and somebody from the local volunteer fire department will come out and help you. I want to thank you for watching this little bit of documentary about indoor fire safety from Yakona Volunteer Fire Department here in Tacona, Alaska. And I just want to encourage you in this regard. Um, one of the things that is uh, going away a lot in our communities is volunteerism. And so I'd encourage you as you get of age, 18 years of age, uh, to join a local volunteer fire department. It's neighbor helping neighbor. And uh, out here at the Kona Volunteer Fire Department, we have nine volunteers that work and whenever that radio tones out, they're ready to go. And so I would just encourage you, whether you live in Glen Allen, Copper Center, Kinney Lake, or wherever you live out in the Copper River Basin, when there's an emergency call, um, <clears throat> join your local volunteer fire department and help, help your neighbors help each other. And then also, I know there's some challenges going on. I would like to encourage you to do this for your challenges for this video. When you go home and watch this video, take a picture. Have somebody take a picture of you checking your smoke detector battery or changing the battery in your smoke detector and send that in to Gakona Village. And, but send that video or that picture in with your, with your packet of information and you'll and, uh, receive a prize. And also, um, you can either do that or you can send in a copy of your escape route. Sit down with your mom and dad and draw out the escape route. This is where we're gonna go. This is what we're gonna do. Um, 
and, and then get that escape route, draw it out on a piece of paper and send that in as well. And I'm sure that you'll be rewarded for your time and your energy for doing that. But thank you so much for watching this video. We greatly appreciate it. And come by and see us at the local volunteer fire department. If you're in Gacona, stop by and see us. Uh, we have our meetings every uh, the second Tuesday of every month, our training meetings. We'd love to have you come out and just see what we're doing here. Thank you.